This is your Midday News Weather Now. All of us travel through Florida, mostly on highways, but few move through the state as animals do in forests, over the hills and through rivers of grass. One team of environmentalists hiked, biked, and paddled their way 900 miles through the state on a 70-day journey. Along their way, they saw lots of things, including 42 endangered species. Their expedition promotes the completion of the Florida Wildlife Corridor, a network of paths in rural areas that help wildlife thrive. The team traveled from Haines City to the Panhandle to the Alabama border. And two members joined me to share what they learned about Florida's beauty. Well, joining me right now, we have Joe Guthrie and Mallory Likes Dimmitt. If you remember, folks, a couple of weeks ago, maybe even longer than that, that we were here to talk about this incredible journey that you guys were going to take, kind of a trek all across Florida and something called the Wildlife Corridor Expedition. Holy smokes, you're back and you're alive after going nearly a thousand miles. Is that right? That's right. We left um, this area on January 10th and we trekked for 70 straight days across all of Northwest Florida t to the Alabama border. You walked it. You weren't riding or anything like that? Just Well, we were actually uh, riding bikes for a portion of it, um, but a large portion was of it, all of it, pardon me. Yeah. <laughs> a large portion of it was also in kayaks. Oh, okay. So you did a what, what did you discover that you didn't know when you went out? Folks, and well, this is a conservation effort to try to get us to realize that even as, as developed as the state of Florida is, we have these incredible natural corridors. Let's talk about where are some of those natural corridors? Well, the corridors extend statewide from north, south, and east, west. And so really the Florida Wildlife Corridor is a vision to help keep Florida wild. And the number one thing we discovered is that that opportunity still exists. By essentially, oh, really? By us proving that you can go for 70 straight days or 100 straight days as we did on our earlier expedition, that the, this opportunity still exists, the landscapes are still connected, and our challenge is to keep it that way into the future. What's the biggest uh, obstacle to that? Is it laws or is it people that really want to have the rights to develop their property the way they see fit? Well, there are, lots of, uh, there are lots of potential obstacles. Really, I think our expedition is about creating the, the will and, and raising the awareness to, to go ahead and try to accomplish what's out there, what's out there left to be accomplished uh -huh. in terms of conservation. And we know, because I was looking at some of the numbers, the habitat, we have 42 endangered species that are in those areas. Did you see some of these endangered species? I mean, the, the obvious ones that we know about are things like manatees, uh, uh, storks, uh, some, uh, cranes, those kind of things. Gopher tortoises, we saw uh, lots of manatees. There was record number of manatees counted this year in Florida. We spent some time swimming with them and seeing them while paddling, which was great. Uh -huh. um, what else did we see? We saw uh, all sorts of amphibians, reptiles, uh, many, many b birds. Mm -hmm. um, Red cockaded woodpeckers, um, uh, in eastern indigo snake, um, critters that aren't really um, known to the wider world, but which are endemic to Florida, uh, endemic to the southeast, and are losing habitat across their range. Right. Uh, fortunately, in Florida, we have um, quite a bit of a land base and habitat that's under protection, but we've got to go ahead and take the next steps and protect some more of it. Now, are we kind of lucky in a way that we always have this rain that takes a lot of this land that some people might like to develop and makes it into muck land that, that some of us might think it's wasted, but in reality, these are incredible habitats with thousands of different life forms that depend upon them. Absolutely. Florida is so lucky to have these swamps, and really these swamps are great havens for wildlife. They don't mind that it's wet. They're evolved, actually, to be uh, wet most of the year or parts of the year. And so we started in the, uh, in the green swamp in central Florida between Orlando and Tampa Bay area. Uh -huh. We also traveled through many sort of standing water places all the way as we worked our way north and west. It would, would there ever be a possibility, and of course I'm mm -hmm. dreaming because I'm a, I'm a bike trail kind of guy. I'd mm -hmm. like to see bike trails over the, the whole state. Is there any possibility of doing something like they did with the Appalachian Trail of saying, here is a hiking path, folks, if you want to go the thousand miles like we did, here's what you would need to do to cross the state of Florida. Yep. There's already an amazing trail system in Florida. There's the 1,400 mile F Florida National Scenic Trail on which we spent quite a long time. Uh -huh. um, and then, and all told, there's somewhere around 8,000 miles of publicly accessible trails uh, in, in Florida. There's the rails to trail system of which we you, That's you know, true. used. We used quite a bit of the Withlacoochee State Trail. Um, and, and other and other public, publicly accessible trails. So whose attention are you trying to get with this? 
Um, we're trying to get the public's attention, really, to get people to know about this vision for the Florida Wildlife Corridor that exists and that if mm -hmm. they care about it, that it's something that they should share with their legislators and elected officials, that they want to see these lands protected as we think through Florida's future. When you're thinking about this, though, but you think about the, what we had to do in the state of Florida, I mean the voters, they had to vote that a certain percentage of the budget would be, budget would be dedicated to environmental projects and buying up land, and yet we see we're not even through the legislative session, and now some of those proposals that we thought were going to take place look like they're not going to happen. Well, it's a, real, it's a real struggle that we face not just in Florida but all over the country with the kind of mindset that we own too much land and we need to do a better job of managing it. There's also the tension of we're losing habitat and we're losing species across the southeast. There's a lot of opportunity out there, and we've just got to keep a little bit of pressure on. Uh huh. And how many pictures did Janet taken? Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? What do we come up with? Four, it's forty thousand. Forty something thousand photos. Oh, forty thousand. <laughs> so oh my it takes, gosh. It takes a while to sort through all of those, and we're also working towards a film that will come out this fall. And oh. So we'll be doing lots of presentations, and we look forward to a PBS one-hour documentary on the Florida Wildlife. Now, Park. when we talk about this area, because I've, I've been in the area since '86, so I've seen how. Tampa Bay has remarkably improved in, 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 in uh, speaking in terms of millennials or anything like that in a relatively short amount of time. Are there still pristine areas and or did you also see some areas where you saw mankind encroaching where this area that was pristine is now being spoiled and it will probably be spoiled even further in? We saw all of the above, really. Um, when you think through um, wild Florida, there are so many parts that are pristine and that are pretty far out there and they feel very remote. But most of the time, we're up against some sort of edge. And so if you think about the growth of the Tampa Bay area, as you said, over time, oh, yeah. you know, that, is, that is visible all the way up through Chazowitzka and Crystal River as Tampa Bay expands north. And we went right through that area where there is a lot of growth and a lot of development. And so mm -hmm. thinking through you know, keeping those places connected to nature over time is going to be a challenge. And okay. cer certainly, even as we went further ac across the panhandle, there are places that are growing. Yeah, and Joe, did you ever think to yourself, what am I doing out here? <laughs> am I crazy? Am I physically exhausted? Because I know you finished it a while back, but man, you both look like you're in great shape. Maybe all the rest of us need to go out and hike a thousand miles through Florida. Well, certainly, I think everyone would benefit from some of, from some of that. But um, on the expedition, we did face you know some some cold conditions. I'm sure everyone uh, experienced you know it was kind of a, a rough February. Yeah, uh, yeah. Was. And and um, and and we were out in it, and there were certainly times where I questioned the the sanity of the whole thing. But it, it worked. We we had um, we had good support and um, a good plan. And uh, the real challenge is really to kind of keep it all protected. You know, what, one of the things that's so interesting about Florida is that we have such an incredible mixture of aquatic life, i.e. you have the salt water, and then you have the brackish water, and then you have the clear water. And to see how all of these things interchange with each other and in our minds we go, how can all this stuff mix together and still support life? And yet it does. And it's all connected from the fossil water down in the aquifer up to the surface and flowing all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. And so we try to um, you know, experience each one of those life zones. And we swam in Florida Springs. We swam in the rivers. We paddled the rivers. And we were in the Gulf as well. So Tell me about some of the support agencies that you worked with that, that are involved in this kind of project as well. Do you have some others? We had great support from um, the FWC, the Department of Environmental Protection, the, and the Water Management Districts, the Florida Forest, Forest Service underneath the Department of Ag. Um, so and then and then we worked very closely with the Nature Conservancy. Um, we met with Florida Audubon and we and we and we worked with legislators themselves who came out on the expedition. So we yeah. had we had um, we certainly had support. Now, uh, if people want to see these videos, some of them that we've been showing on our air right now, and some of the stills that you took of the forty thousand, <laughs> I hope you labeled them all. <laughs> You're in the process of it. Where can people find those and see those? They can also they can see those on our website, www.floridawildlifecorridor.org, and we also have a map gallery there that shows the route that we took and right. a bunch of maps of the corridor. Well, congratulations on what you did, and I can't wait to see all the pictures because I know Florida is a beautiful state. And we want to keep it that way. Thanks again Thank for stopping you. by. Thank you. Al.